Hi everyone, this is Adam Batsy from Konami. You're now listening to the Scene World Podcast. Este el es podcast Scene World. Mi nombre es AJ. Jürgen este sentado alai. Wrong language. Oh, sorry. My bad. <laughs> What's up? Hello. Yeah. Well, so, I have been pretty busy last week with Gamescom. Yes, you went to Gamescom. And yeah. And you were there for two whole days. You had a booth with Hans High Score. Yes. Exactly. And um, we have been there for the week. So, we traveled on Tuesday to there to build up the booth. Mm-hmm. And Wednesday was the business day. And Thursday till Sunday was the entertainment area opening for everybody. So we got a lot of interviews and nice. they are they are all they're all in our um um in our YouTube channel in our mm-hmm. playlist and uh, named Gamescom two thousand sixteen. So what we have got so far um is an interview with Norbert Varga with the current um graphics and status on Equinox, Deep Descent. So, uh, Norbert Varga, who we spoke to, um, when did we talk to him? In our podcast. Yes, we talked A to him in our ago. podcast, but yeah, that was that was episode number 12. That was September of 2015. So, yes, exactly. Yeah. And the funny thing is, um, in between, there was not an update for half a year, and even some people reported the Kickstarter as dead to Kickstarter. Because there was no update, but you know, I'm not too concerned with that actually. Right. Um, yeah. So as as we've said before here, that when you when you uh, donate to a Kickstarter, you're you're invest you're you're making an investment. You're not buying anything. So lack of updates is not necessarily a reason to get angry about nothing yeah. happening. Yeah, that's true. And so far, I always got my money back if some project failed. Like um, the melt thing, mm. which was for a cooktop, that would mean automatically control of your cooktop. Um, are, you, or, are you telling me that you that you invested in something that was not C sixty four related? Yes. Or, or retro gaming yes, related? Of course, I like cooking and baking. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. We've learned something new today, people. Yeah. Yeah. Like baking yeah right. So um, what? So I think the. The Equinox um, interview was the best so far that I did on on uh, Gamescom. Mm-hmm. So check that out. We will post a link to the playlist on YouTube of Gamescom yes, yes. 2016 mm-hmm. in our description. Yes. Because it's a cryptic link. The other news is I had an interview with Robert McGowan, who is Q and A lead tester for Thimbleweed Park. Yes. Which we mentioned uh, briefly in our last year's Gamescom 2015 special because when Fuzzing Aka Retro Hunter interviewed him, that means Ron Gilbert, Mm -hmm. on stage. So we got an update on that as well and some pictures and some videos on that interview as well yes. and um, it was in the entertainment area on a Sunday behind the scenes of Microsoft because for the first three months after release it will be an Xbox exclusive title and after that it will come to um, Nintendo and PlayStation consoles that that is why Thimbleweed Park um, was a part of Microsoft on Gamescom. Uh, okay. So anyway, thanks to my good microphone, you can still hear the interview very well. Another interview we did was um, with Friends Up, you know, the yes. um, operating system that Maybe is like cloud. System. Yeah, And we also answered the question what it has to do with Amiga and so on, because it was asked a lot. So we are talking to Hockner and David Pleasance 
of um, Friends app. Yes. Also, I had an interview, a group interview with Adam Betty, you know, global brand manager from Konami of Pro Evolution. Who, Software. again, we spoke to in November of 2015, podcast episode number 16, for those of you keeping track at home. Yes. And he promised a bit, and I mean, well, offered us, invited us to come to Gamescom and have, have an interview with him. So we had that. And he was allowing us to record it. So I got a video of that. Nice. Um, of me and others asking him questions. Yes. So what else, we, what else we have got? Yes. We also got John Hare. About time. We've been trying to get John Hare since we talked to uh, these guys back in, in 2015. Uh, initially, since we did um, the Gamescom special, which was August of 2015, because we spoke to EA Sports, yes. and then we talked to Adam Body from Konami, another yep. soccer game, and then John Hare is doing sociable soccer, and we couldn't get him. Yeah. So thanks to Devin Melbourne, who promised us to talk to him and try to convince mm -hmm. him. It worked, and he showed me his... Um, Current status on the PC version and the VR version for smartphones because he had a booth at the retro area. And that's who we'll be talking to today. Actually, this is yes. who you're going to be talking to today because I was not at Gamescom. So, yeah. so we'll be listening to Jörg talk to him. Yes. So this is our this year's special podcast. Yes. And we thought since we had the podcast including EA Sports and the podcast with M. Betty from Konami, it would only be fair to have the podcast with John here. Yes. So after Matthew McKay from EA Sports and Adam Betty from Konami, now you hear um, John here from the brands of Micropro Soccer and Sensible Soccer talking about his newest soccer game, Sociable Soccer. Yes. Right. Okay, so other news from Gamescom would be that Defender of the Crown Collector's Edition was released by Cinema Real Retro. And again, yes. people were concerned that the prompt was dead. And we kept saying no. So my first thing is keep on doing the Cinema Real Retro. That is separate, the sub brand from Cinema Real. Um, so he kept his promise and he sent us an unboxing unit as well. So awesome. there will be an unboxing too. Thanks, man. So now, now wait a minute. Explain something to me real quick. So we got two. You you, you got two. Yes. One is for the unboxing. One, the one the one I bought. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So one one of you you one of them you bought. Yeah. The other is for unboxing. Yeah. What what are you doing with the one that you bought? I keep it sealed. Oh, you're not okay. So you're not. Cause I was gonna say, well, why why have two? Because you're gonna you know play them. Yes. But if, if you're if you're not opening the one, then it makes sense to have one for unboxing. Well, obviously. it is explained in the newsletter that's been sent like a couple of months ago. He was explaining that a lot of customers wanted a sealed. Um version so because if it's not sealed it would lose you know value when you want to resale it i got a, i got a sealed copy of alf yeah which is a terrible terrible game but my 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 grandma got me it for two two christmases in a row because so i had I, I had it and then she got me another one so i just put it in a drawer and i've had this thing for for a thousand years I, it's not worth anything because it's anyway, out. shrinking foil <laughs> version would have been too expensive, so Sven decided to go for a seal sticker version. Okay, so it's just got a sticker on it. Yeah, a seal oh. sticker on it. Yeah. Okay. So this is why I got a, a review version, so I wouldn't lose value on mine, which was very kind. Could just send you another sticker. Be like here, replace the old one with this. <laughs> resale it. Well, that would be kind of if you reseal it, it would be kind of faking, you know. Well, you know. <laughs> I mean, one thing in my life I never did is 
fooling people for money. Never did mm-hmm. that. And never. Well, but but are you going to sell the thing ever? No, you just you, no. you're collecting it. So it's not. Yeah. So the value of it is entirely a personal thing. It's not. It's not like you know. It, it's it's not like opening it is actually going to diminish the value to anyone but you, because hmm. you're not selling it. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe someday if I'm in money troubles or something, you never know. Anyway, this was the reasoning. So thank you, Sven. Um, I think I think you would sell off your kidneys before you sold off your uh, your your Commodore stuff <laughs> and your retro so, gaming so, stuff. Oh yeah. <laughs> so anyway. Um, that will be coming to our YouTube channel. God knows when. I will do it as soon as possible. So anyway, Sven kept his promise of Mm -hmm. releasing the collector's edition of Defender of the Crown. And that means Rocket Ranger is coming next. Nice. Nice. Yeah. And it came from the desert on Mega Drive. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping for that too. And wings for the Amiga. Yes. The rings reloaded for the Amiga. Yeah. So Cinema Very Retro has a lot of things in the open mm-hmm. to be coming out. Another thing is there is a new there is a new label for um, C sixty four games. It's called Polyplay by Sebastian Bach, and Sebastian Bach is the guy called Seba in the demo scene. And he would be of Plash, the demo group. And nice. he was the previous layouter from the Go64 magazine that is now called Retro, one of the leading magazines from Germany and the successor of the C64 AR magazine. Um, so that means there's, there will be a new label for There's actually quite a few newer labels because... Um... Just recently, in the past, uh, I don't know, maybe five, six months or so, we had uh, Pawn Software kind of pop up with their um, Space Fan Explore video game, which with with graphics done by by Von Yutney. and yeah. uh, you know, so I mean, it's it's and and it's funny too because you see that lately there's these labels popping up, and and Andrew just you know he unboxed this new game that's for the sixty four. You know, and it's it got a box and everything. It, it's it's kind of funny that now, in 2016, you've got you've got software companies reemerging for the 64, yeah. which is not something that I thought would ever happen in my lifetime. Hmm. Yeah. I thought that was pretty much done, and and any software that was made would be you know made by individuals that would put it out you know public domain or or something like that and not a commercial piece of software that you can purchase and have an actual box and look at and and what have you. I mean, think about that. I mean, even Microsoft came to our booth last year at Gamescom and said, wow, Commodore 64 magazine, that's interesting. Maybe mm. we could work together. Yeah. And this year I was at the Microsoft booth at Gamescom having they were like, who are you? I don't remember you. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, yeah, normally you would think like that. You know? Hmm. But hey, C64 and Retro, Retro and so on, it's uh, interesting uh, again. Even um, even though you would not think that companies like uh, Microsoft would take you seriously. But they do. Well, we're, we're, it's it's in it's in style. Uh, the retro gaming, uh, specifically retro gaming, but but then you know you get down to you know NES stuff or C sixty four stuff, and it's actually it's popular. People are are into it again, and it's it's cool for people like us because you know we were doing this when it wasn't cool, and now suddenly oh we're, we now we can finally be cool like everybody else. Uh, it's interesting but, that people and that the big media is complaining about the lack of information and cooperation with um, with the companies companies that are involved with Equinox Deep Descent. But mm-hmm. our experience was you and mine when we contact them. EA, um, i.e., I mean, Nordic Games in Austria. We got an instant reply and support, and even had Norbert Wagner, the CEO and lead developer, um, talking to us on the podcast. And then we got an interview at Gamescom. That's totally surprising, you know? 
Yeah. So yeah. they they put more focus on talking to us as scene world than on this mainstream media in Germany because yeah. I was having um, a phone conversation with the leading editor of PC Games which is the leading magazine here in Germany for video games and he was like I mean PC games and he was like wow you really got an exclusive here because they would not talk to anybody else but you hmm. so um, yeah that's that's interesting yes it is right it's it's yeah there's a lot of you know and 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 there's a lot of people that are are capitalizing on this too aside from just you know us and some of the big name players there's a lot of people that are are doing something with it as far as you know producing and in a couple of weeks we'll have more stuff because i'll be at a video game con for the second year now in a row, I'll be there on Sunday. Uh, there's interesting stuff happening on Sunday. There's also interesting stuff happening on Saturday, but I'm not going to be there for that. So that's kind of a bummer, but what, what are you going to do? So I'm going to miss the burlesque show this year. So everyone go check out the videos that are on YouTube and see our adventures in, uh, at Gamescom. All right, well, let's, seg let's segue into the, uh, the actual interview. So, so yeah, so anyway, John Hare, York talked to him at Gamescom. And so we're going to go and he'll listen to that right now. So today I'm interviewing John Hare uh -huh. of, um, well, the creator of Sensible Soccer, actually. Mm -hmm. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for taking the time. No problem. So now we are talking about your newest creation. Uh -huh. That would be Sociable Soccer. Correct. And you started a Kickstarter a while ago about that, but that wasn't successful. So uh -huh. I think the last that was, was you wrote that you want to go traditional ways of publishing it. Correct. Right. So um, you gave me the chance to look at the newest, I don't know, Xbox PC version? Uh, it's PC version. Yeah. It's a PC version yeah. with an Xbox controller, I yeah. played it. And the VR version. So let's yes. talk about that. Uh -huh. So first of all, I have to admit, I was more of a micro pro soccer player. Okay. Um, so maybe no I problem. missed some. I don't mind micro pro soccer. That works as well. Okay. Yeah. So just in case I missed some. Because you know we made micro pro soccer as well. Oh, sensible so uh, sensible software did that too. We did micro pro soccer first, then we did sensible soccer, and now I'm doing sociable soccer with different team. Okay, because on my version it said um, it said micro pros. Of course, they published it, but we developed it. Ah. Yeah. So, uh, so this is good. 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 You said something good. So that, that doesn't give me minus points or no, something. No, this gives you plus points. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I, I especially like the um, banana cake or something, was what it was yeah. called. Yeah, that was pretty neat. And that you had rain and so on. Um, but I think Sensible Soccer was more an Amiga game. It was an, it was Amiga first. And then it went to ST, to PC, to and then later to Xbox, PlayStation. That would explain. You skipped the Amiga. Yeah, I went from C64 to PC and NES and okay. SNES between. You that would have, explain. You could have found Sensible Soccer on PC, but the Amiga version was superior. Yeah. Why make a retro brand when it's a different game? And actually, the it's got like free to play uh, on the mobile stuff. It's got like free to play mechanics of a a, a different kind of uh, player avatar career thing within your big team. Uh, and uh, it's got uh, online gameplay and many things that we didn't have in Sensible Soccer so it's a different kind of game. <laughs> it's got a huge amount of content, I uh -huh. have to say. It's still got the thousand teams, 31,000 players, you know, 66 tournaments. In fact, we, stating it in modern ways you state, it's probably got about 500 hours gameplay on the single player mode and then the online stuff is separate with all the league, league systems and stuff. It's interesting because what you're telling me now is <laughs> you're going against the trend because I mean, nowadays companies are trying to get the IP from retro games and make uh -huh. it a successor because they think it's more successful because people like my age who were childs yeah. like 20 years ago, they might remember the name and say, yeah, it's more likely to, that I buy the successor because the name is the same. But you say you want to make a totally different soccer game that is not entirely connected to, to the Sensible Soccer Well, the, the only thing, you know, I mean, I mean, you could, there are similarities to Sensible Soccer. Obviously, it plays at a fast pace. 
Uh, there's several camera angles, but the, you can play in PC the, the overhead kind of angle because it's in Unity in 3D. We mm -hmm. can pick any angle we want, so the VR is obviously totally different. It's like top of the stadium at the side and sort of scrolling around in, like a cameraman, you know? Um, so I think that it would be a mistake to call it sensible soccer, actually. It makes the game seem smaller than it is. This is actually uh, five platforms because it's also on... PlayStation, Xbox, as well as PC and iOS and Android. All the wow. VR headsets is in NVIDIA Shield, so we can take your mobile phone to your TV, and Apple TV does that as well. Um, so we needed to fa find a combination that works, that we could go for premium on uh, Xbox and on PlayStation, that can go for free-to-play. Um, so we found mechanics that we think are so good in free-to-play. Uh, specifically, uh, there's a mechanic in 8-Ball Pool, I don't know if you played that. Oh, yeah. Uh, where you kind of decide how much of your game money you want to say you're going to risk on the next game. Uh, this is a really cool game mechanic. Mm. As long as you don't monetize it by taking money from the player, it also works on premium. It's just a way of, you know, backing yourself up and up and up and up and then going back down again. So it's quite a cool mechanic. So it's not a normal commercial game, it's for a free-to-play game? It's premium and free-to-play. Ah, both. So, okay. What, so, what we've done to make a cross-platform game. Obviously, Unity helps on the platform front. We the plug in the VR in wasn't too hard, and that works on every platform except Apple, uh, Apple iOS at the moment. Because we're in five platforms, in uh, th there's different things to solve now yeah. in the games market. And you so said you said Unity works on every platform Unity except you no, iOS. No. Unity works on every platform. VR works on every platform except iOS right now because okay. Apple don't have currently have a VR support. I mean, you never know with Apple, they may come out in six months with the best VR system you've ever seen, in which case we will support it. So yeah. we don't know about this. Uh, iOS and Andro Android both support means of getting your TV to your television via Apple TV or Nvidia Shields. So this now can turn your phone into a, effectively a VR console plus uh, a regular console which goes to your TV, which is pretty cool, with remote controllers this is, which are quite cheap, about 15, well, about 20 euros a second. Mm. So, the, the thing from a publishing point of view is how do you combat the, the fact that all mobile games are free to play and on the kind of downloadable digital kind of like PlayStation, Xbox, which, is, which we will be on those platforms, and to a certain extent on Steam as well, it tends to be premium. Right, so how do we battle that? So it took us a while to figure out the plan because we wanted to make one really good game. So basically, the system is pretty simple. We have uh, 66 full tournaments in the game. We have 1,000 teams. We have 31,000 players. We have five leagues and two cups in England, you know, three leagues and a cup in Germany, two in Spain, two in Italy, and then Argentina, Brazil, America, Mexico, Korea, Japan, China, Australia, Russia, Turkey, Portugal, Greece, etc., 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 okay? So our plan was quite simply that in the premium version, it's all unlocked at the start. In the free-to-play version, you only get three of those things unlocked. Mm, I see. So you can play to slowly unlock them, or you pay to get them unlocked quickly. This is free-to-play mechanic. In the online league system, so in the online league system, you choose your club from a thousand clubs at the start. You choose your country, and you put your name. And everyone around the world is different. So then you play through the leagues. But this, the monetization from April Paul works because you you kind of have game currency, and you decide how much you want to say you're going to play on the next game. If you win, you kind of double your money. If you draw, it just stays the same. You can't have a draw in pool, you can in football, and if you lose, you lose your money. So we keep that part. But what happens when you lose your money is you, you, you then have to buy other game money to come back in, right? So we've added a, a free spin at the bottom of the pile. So when you run out of money, you've got a free spin, where it costs you nothing, but you get a, about a little bit of money if you win, to keep you back on the road again to make mm -hmm. money, you understand? And, just, that's um, and the, only, the main difference between free to play and premium on premium, whenever you go down, you just get free spin, you go back up again, you go down, okay? Nice, nice. So, um, you're trying to, by gaining XP, the main difference between the uh, free-to-play and the premium side is that on, uh, on the uh, free-to-play, two key things here. There's about four different things, so, but the two key things are the free spin only works once every six hours in free-to-play, or you have to pay. You know, you have to pay to get more money. The second thing 
is that your XP every every day you're trying to get promoted in the league. So we have leagues of 50 teams. If you're in the top 10, you get promoted. In the bottom 10, you get relegated. So every day you're trying to push up the leagues to get your team from because we've got 820 club sides. You've got 16 divisions in the in the league system. So you're trying to push up to the next division. So um, you just play, you keep your XP. If you fail to get promotion, ah, oh, so next mm. time you'll start slightly higher up the league and you play again. I see, I um, understand. On the free-to-play version, every day, if you didn't fill up your XP bar, it just goes all the way down to zero and gets converted to cash. Okay? So it's a system which means that <clears throat> the premium player keeps his XP, the premium player has limitless free spins, the premium player has all the content unlocked, whereas in the free-to-play, this is all limited. Okay? Makes sense, makes sense. Without us having to reinvent the game, yeah, it's just, it's just, it comes around in a different way. And the last thing is that, <clears throat> this is quite a cool thing actually, when you win some of the games, you unlock classic players from the past. So if you're playing for Munich, you could unlock Matthias. And he's like a special weapon who goes in your team. Ah, okay? that's quite interesting. So okay. you can put your player avatar in the team, If so you have these two managers, your country and club, and sometimes they select your avatar to join the team. And then you can use your antic pass player and add it to the team as add well. As well as like a special weapon. Ah, okay. So these come for like they're like loan players in real football. So for one, two, three, four, or five matches, you get these guys coming in to join the squad. Uh, and on the free to play version, you have an option to pay to keep the loan going for longer. Mm. Okay. Okay. Not something we'll be putting in the premium version. So I see. we've tried to keep the game mechanics and the game system's identical, but just uh, balance the way it works for the financial mechanics, which means that the premium players are getting a lot more value, because they want that value, mm. but the free-to-play players can still access the content via free-to-play mechanics. Interesting. So this has taken quite a while to come up with a nice balanced system. Okay, so let's talk a bit about the gameplay. I have played it and I figured it's more of an action football game. You're not really realistic on uh, yellow cards, red cards. Oh, and no. Like okay, so there's a, there's a point. There's two, you're correct, half correct. So Correct me. <laughs> okay, so you're right. It's an very much, I get asked a lot, what's the difference between this game and FIFA or Pro Evo? This is a constant question. Um, the answer is we are not trying to be FIFA or Pro Evo, which are both real, realistic, TV realistic simulations. We are an arcade game. We are a fast paced arcade game. If you watch two really good players playing it, the rhythm is more like a fighting game. It's so fast. I mean, when I play top speed, I'll, I can do four passes in one second. Like three passes and shoot. Taking me one second in gameplay. And the other guys try to put in three tackles in the same time. So, um, in terms of the gameplay, it's fun, and uh, it's more like a snack as opposed to a gourmet dinner, which you call FIFA or Pro Evolution Soccer. So, I, although it's football action, um, we are not particularly competing on the same turf. You know, it's just something you could almost play both games, depending on how much time you've got. Our games last for three minutes. Okay. So the second thing about the referees, this is because the game you played at the moment is just over half finished and we haven't done the referees yet. You might also notice that the players currently kick the ball in rather than throw, because we haven't done the throwing animation frames yet. So this is a, this is a gameplay wise it's probably 85% there, but in terms of animation and some other things it's missing a lot of stuff. I also think um, in the Kickstarter there was mentioning of um, cutscenes and action scenes, like I don't I don't really remember, but I think there was kind of cutscene. I don't know. We've not really thought about cutscenes for, for a while, really. Um, I guess there'll be some things, maybe when you win a trophy or something. But to be honest, we're not anywhere near that part of the game yet. We've just got the core gameplay, all the teams, and all those things. So there's a lot to still be added to the game. You know, it's not finished. It's a are there any special features like um, like raining, like from Micro Pro Soccer, or a banana kick, or whatever the special kicks, moves? The banana kicks are in there. The, you know that the full aftertouch system is in there, actually. Uh, Control-wise, we've kind of done a combination of uh, Central Soccer and FIFA, actually. So you, you've got all the, a FIFA player can pick this up quickly. What we're finding, what is great about the game, is it's like a light version of FIFA to young children. So 
a lot of young children find FIFA quite complex to pick up. Yeah. Whereas we've put it on three buttons. Okay. But actually, there's a special button, which is the pass button for the FIFA player, which is actually a full sensible soccer control button. So you tap it to pass, and if you hold it down for a long time, you kind of can bend it around in exactly the normal sensible soccer way. So this means that the only difference for a FIFA player is he's got to remember he can't hold the pass button down for too long, he's got to tap it on the floor or it turns into a sensible soccer shot. Um, and we're finding this is a quite a nice balance, actually. And uh, there's, there's a lot of, you know, the, the actual touch controls on the, on the mobile, if you don't have a remote control, you need to put your fingers, is actually very good. And possibly more in mobile because of the lack of competition. Uh, Ultimate Team is the only full action game for football on mobile at all. Uh, and I would say the weakness of it is that it was a game designed for console, because it's a basically a FIFA port, uh, on mobile. And they haven't quite worked out how to turn it into a proper mobile title. It's a little bit slow. The controls aren't quite uh, optimised for, for mobile, because they weren't designed for mobile originally. And so we had the advantage of starting off with nothing and planning a cross-platform game that would consider all this stuff from the start. So we've got very little competition on, on mobile at all. You know, mm. we really haven't. This, like I said, there's one other game. It might be a big one, but there's one. So you don't see yourself as a competition of FIFA and Pro Evolution Soccer, but you are, um, well, giving a hand on the FIFA players by putting in a button that works like on FIFA, as I said. It's the buttons, yeah. the, the, the control structure on FIFA and Pro Evolution Soccer, which is all everyone's played for the last 15 years, are pretty much similar default control nice. systems. So we decided to just use the same, but we just took out all the complex moves. And the mobile version, apart from the impressive yeah. VR, by the way, mm -hmm. because it, it's like you are really watching the game and you uh -huh. have to move your head to see where you are going. Um, I, s I also noticed it's playing faster on the VR system than on the PC version. Could that be? be? I would ask the programmer about that. Okay. So there's no intention to do that. Maybe some of them aren't quite standardized. There's a chance because the code base in some areas hasn't yet been totally synced. But I'll be surprised. It might be the system itself. Okay. And that might need managing, but there's not the intention. Okay, okay. This, you can't come through this one. So basically it's the same game? It's exactly the same game. We're going through Unity, yeah. Okay. We're only making one really great game that's made for all the systems and then making sure it works on the systems. That's a good question actually, because in the past there was a lot of problems of game converting, like from uh, console to PC, oh. and then it would lose quality. Don't and tell me about it. Have you ever played PlayStation Sensible Soccer? No, it's never. It's horrendous. The original PlayStation. But in general, the PC versions, we like for Cannon Fodder and Megalomania, and Sensible Soccer all went to the same company, a company called AVM or Wave. Uh, and they did the conversions there, they were pretty good, but it wasn't exactly the same tuning as the original, you know. Uh, and then you'd have like PlayStation, Xbox, Jaguar, Lynx, 3DO, CD32, remember all these formats. <laughs> and it's like, you're, you, you've got no control of, of the quality. Yes. And it was, and, and the earlier you go back, the worse it is. So there's a version of uh, Shoot 'em Up Construction Kit, which we did on the Commodore 64, which was put on the Amiga, which I think is actually worse than the Commodore 64 version. Maybe, of course, I've got rose tinted spectacles or I, I value our stuff. The same I'd say for Wizball. Wizball and the Spectrum, we didn't touch that. So, in each of those games, you're kind of. You've got to allow another bunch of developers to do a job. And if I'm really honest, we're never, ever as happy with what they've done as what we would have done. But having said that, you didn't have time. There were so many conversions to do. But so nowadays. Unity is brilliant for this and Unreal. They're both good engines, right? And uh, it's brilliant what they give us. They just, uh, from a, okay, but if you look at, has anyone, if anyone's seen the Sensible Soccer we did in 3D in 1998, um, we were, everyone was getting to grips with writing 3D engines. In our, in our company, that meant for me as a designer, 75% of the time, we couldn't even work on gameplay because we are just about making graphics display. Yeah, yeah. to make the conversion. Go well, right. just to make the engine work. Mm. So it was even worse than the version. It was actually the engine of the original version. And nowadays it's easier because you have one 
less platforms and uh -huh. second you have unity and it's all the same Absolutely framework correct. yeah correct it's brilliant from a designer's point of view the programmers will always moan about unity or unreal you can't help it programmers like to moan about that but from a designer's point of view it means i can constantly be talking about the design and i don't get deflected about oh we need to render more polygons wow. that's example. really so great it's brilliant because it went from and it's very much more similar to the commodore 64 and the amiga development uh kind of like st structure because they were also internal systems totally different types of systems but the system was very strong and robust a bit like unity or unreal which means that you don't have to f spend all your time focusing on the you know like the groundwork the foundations of the game that's kind of laid out for you great so in the end it uh, shouldn't matter which platform i will buy sociable sociable soccer for it sh I should have the similar or same experience. In terms of playing experience, uh, they're very, very similar. There's people out there at the moment playing, for example, there's a version dis on display on the PC with the Xbox controllers, like you said. Um, there's also a version on an iPad. We've seen r remote controllers work on an iPad. You can also play on the touch screen on the phones, but in a, mm. in a game show, that's like not recommended. Touch controls and the, the joypad is slightly different, but they're very, very similar. No. Great. So when do you plan to release the full version? So currently we're speaking to a number of different publishers uh, and assessing our opportunities and how we take it to market. Um, the main advantage actually of not having the Kickstarter was twofold. Firstly, we could experiment with stuff more, which meant we came upon this VR by accident actually. And it's turned out to be a very, very cool feature that people have. I can agree. Used that it's probably the, cool, the coolest feature in the game at the moment. Uh, and I have to say that speaking to like Oculus particularly, there's not many other people making games like this and, and you know, people have said this is the best game I've ever seen on VR. Wow. Full stop. Yeah. The reason is because it, we're not making people motion sick, we're not moving them around, we're keeping them still in a seat yes, like a cameraman and you're rotating. That's right. And it's a really good playable game underneath it. So what VR tends to be is a graphics demo with a bit of gameplay kind of tagged on. It looks good enough. And uh, the gameplay is really good, and the, it doesn't make you motion sick at all. You just, you just get immersed into being in a stadium, like you're sitting in a chair, turning your head from one goal to the other goal. That's actually the feeling of playing the game. So you don't know yet when you will release it, so it will be kind of next year, I guess. It will be next year. I mean, the, the rough plan we have is that, um, depending on the platform we're talking about, but a kind of, if, there, if, if there's a soft launch, if it's a platform with soft launch on, or, you know, beta kind of thing uh, it will be the beginning of next year oh, like nice. the first month or two we think at the moment and uh, then to release at the, at the March April May like this but some of the publishers we've spoken to have different approaches so if we sign with them they might they might want an extra year from now so it actually depends on the publisher you know all the you know and then it depends on do we have one publisher that does all five platforms which would obviously be one of the bigger guys or do actually we have one that does mobile and one that does PC and console? Yeah. We don't even know that yet. So, mm. okay. you know, and then we have, obviously, the, the, the world market is different. So there's opportunities to do things in different parts of Asia, say, yeah. and, and other places where you can go to very specific publishers who know their markets. So it's quite a complex uh, question to ask when it's released. <laughs> okay. The answer is... Um, when it's we, done. We, well, we, I think we'll have more of an idea towards the end of this year okay. when it's signed up and every you know that the, the, every game needs a publishing plan so hopefully we can, can keep in touch and you can tell us a bit about the progress along the way and yeah, then we I'd know more yeah. if you like yeah, of course to, yes absolutely. then we would do an update interview on our podcast for example that would great. be a possibility okay thank you very much thank you very much yeah